Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's so important. I think that's, I think that's what's been holding society back for so long now. Is just being able to just talk about stuff like say particularly men because it's such a taboo like men don't do that men are tough men just get on with it and no it's not that easy you know you can't do that anymore you're, it's it's so important to just talk to somebody like I say a peer somebody that you trust or respect anybody like that just talk about it So we run a group called Man On, um, which is on a Wednesday, which is for uh, men that may have like go through mental health difficulties, have done, or just want an outlet to come play football. Yeah. So we do like a football session. Where is it held? Uh, at the Maryland Centre, just oh, off the A41. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, if you ever fancy coming down and play. I'll play over on a Wednesday night, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Wednesday daytime, yeah, so we're, we're, we run during the day, it's 90 minutes, yeah. so almost like a football match, you yeah. know, um, and I think the main thing is it's kind of been almost like a support network, I'm sure when you come into training yeah. you've got, you know, peers, friends around who, you know, you can kind of speak to. So is it kind of like a sports network, but it's sort of yeah. a more of an open sports network, where people yeah. like you encourage to talk and all that kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, so we have like an hour of football, then we have like a conversation cafe, and yeah. Sundays we just talk about football, we talk yeah. about kind of tends to be a lot of time around how Watford are doing. Yeah, <laughs> <not wrong> <laughs> uh, and then other times we're talking just, you know, people might kind of bring problems or yeah. talk about maybe stuff that's happened past. So, um, so uh, Mohammed and uh, Paul attend the group um, and, our, and our kind of Watford fans. So um, that's kind of why we're here today. It's kind of, kind of reinforce yeah. um, that message. But I think, yeah, we'll just kind of keep it as kind of informal. Informal, nice. So how have you found it? How do you get on there when you go? I, I personally, if I didn't go to it, I wouldn't be the, where I am today. Yeah, yeah. Um, I joined it because obviously being, like, I went to Sheffield United at home uh -huh. and saw the video on the screen, like the big screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's how I first joined it. And ever since then, I've personally loved going. Yeah. Like every week, it's a good laugh. You, you, you don't, you're not judged by anyone. You're there to pl just I play that's football. That's important, that's got to be really important, hasn't it? It is, because if you're judged by someone, you feel like yeah. insecure well, about Well, you're yourself. not gonna go back either, are you? And that's what that's the whole point behind football is it takes away a lot of the stress, the problems you go through. So for me personally, it's amazing to be there um, every week. Obviously, football is my thing, my element of like getting away from. Yeah, there's a common ground with a lot of men, isn't there? Football kind of thing. You've all got something to sort of talk about, haven't you? Do you know what I mean? There's always something. Yeah, but every week I look forward to playing football. Um, it's just like obviously coming down here today and having a kick around and yeah, it was just yeah, amazing. It's nice, it? So yeah, it's great. It's good, all good fun. It must yeah, be kind of like difficult if you know, I'm sure you've had like injuries in the past and a lot of frustration when you've not been able to kind of access playing football and all of that. How's that yeah. been? I've had loads of injuries. <laughs> I mean, loads, honestly. Um, so I've done my cruciate in my knee twice. I've done my cruciate in that knee once. So that in total is probably over two years out injury, just with knee injuries. Then a couple of, a couple of bone breaks in your foot, hands, fingers, that kind of stuff. Um, oh yeah, I've probably spent the best part of three years out injured. Do you know what I mean? And. Um, I think that in itself is just massively important to maintain a positive attitude towards everything. So I always, I always looked at it as, if you're out injured, you can't play football, what can you do? Do you know what I mean? What can you do off the pitch in the gym? Not even in the gym, whether it's working on like your, your, your attitude, your sort of, your positiveness, your everything like that. How can you work on yourself to make yourself better so that when you are back playing football, you are better than what you was before? I was, I was gonna say, um, You've had to show a lot of kind of resilience in your career, not just with injuries and stuff, but you came from a non-league background, yeah. didn't you? You came yeah. from, was it Racing Club Racing Warwick? Racing Club Warwick, yeah. yeah. And Good research. Nah, so, <laughs> yeah, prepared, so. But how was it having to start off in kind of like non-league and work your way up the levels? Because, you know, with all respect to Racing Club Warwick, they're not a big non-league side, yeah, they're sure. quite far down. Yeah. How, what did you do to kind of get to where you are now as a Premier League goalkeeper? To be able to sort of deal with it and cope with it, all of that kind of stuff. Kind of, I, I remember signing and just thinking, like, 
I think they might have made a mistake here. Do you know what I mean? These guys are really good and I'm kind of, do you know what I mean? I'm a nobody from nowhere kind of thing. But, you know, you sort of dig in, you get used to it sort of thing. You know, I improved a little bit and stuff. And it wasn't until, I'd say the biggest sort of shock and the biggest kind of realisation where I had to really sort of look into myself and kind of dig deep and try and sort of believe in myself was when I actually signed for United. Um, so obviously I hadn't played many first team games. I think I'd played probably 17 or 18 first team matches in my life and then Man United came and bought me for like a million pounds. And you've got to imagine, that's like, what? That's ridiculous. Like, it was, I, I, it was so hard to kind of grasp kind of thing, all that kind of stuff. And honestly, there was no joke, for months and months, right? I, I kept thinking, they've made a mistake. They have definitely made a mistake. They're going to see me in training or something and just go, oh, come on, what have we done? Um, but you were scouted by the top man himself, but, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like Ferguson and, you know, it was, it was, it was incredible. So, but luckily they sent me straight out on loan here to Watford. So I was here for two years. So it was kind of away from the glare of United at least. So you get to sort of get used to being, playing first team football. Um, so that really did help, to be fair. And when I, when I first signed here, actually, we had a, a psychologist that worked w with the team. Keith Mincher, his name was, um, and he was with A.D. Boothroyd. He was part of his coaching staff kind of thing. And that's the thing in football now. You know, we have, we have goalie coaches, you have coaches in the gym, you have outfield coaches, striker coaches, the head coach, all that kind of stuff, yeah? You have no psychologist. There's no head coach. Bearing in mind, you're talking about Premier League football, the richest league in the world, the, the money involved is outrageous, you know. For me, you know, in football, 50% of it is the, the technical, physical ability, 50% of it's in your head. Yeah. And all the coaches are for that, and there's nothing looking after that. And that, to me, is just outrageous. I think mean, it's a key thing, because I think um, current statistics are that one in four adults can experience a mental health issue every year. Yeah. It's, it's very common, but it's still this very taboo thing. So being able to kind of encourage people to talk to someone if they need help, especially men, because, you know, we're yeah. not always very good at kind of sharing how we feel, or how, how, how we are. Um, what other, outside of football, you, like, tough result or something that's happened that hasn't gone to plan, what other things do you do to help, um, you know, if, uh, as a coping mechanism, if, you're, if you've had a rough day, you know, you're, you haven't got optimal mental health. What do you do to kind of, um, you know, relax, get yourself back to a level of normality, to be resilient? What other things do you do outside of football? Okay, great question. Again, this is something that I think is it's a life skill. This, yeah, this is again where the, you, I, I know for a fact there's a lot of our lads that if we have a bad result, it's ruined their weekend. But yeah. they'll take it home with them as well. Do you know what I mean? They'll they'll take it home and they'll it will not only impact them, but it'll impact their kids, their wife, their mum, their dads, their friends, you know what I mean? It'll impact everybody because that of that result. And that, for me, is just criminal. You can't do that. You can't use that and inflict that sort of pain on other people. Like I say, you need to, you've got to learn to be able to park it, leave it there, it's happened, it's done. There's no point dwelling because if you start dwelling on stuff and thinking about it too much, it will hold you back. It genuinely will just hold you back. And it's not going to be like, is there any benefit to, to dwelling on stuff? No, there isn't, is there? As long as you can learn from it, yeah, as long as you know what you've done and what you've done wrong and what you can learn from it and go forward with to make you better, then there's no point in dwelling on stuff. Um, recently, the, um, there was the Tramier game where you had the one minute, it kicked off at uh, one minute past three um, for the Heads Up campaign. How important, because you mentioned earlier that, you know, some, there's not always been a kind of, it's not that it's been very taboo in football, it's not been kind of spoken about. A lot of players are starting to come out and kind of talk about their own kind of mental health issues. How important do you think programmes like Man On, uh, Heads Up are, you know, into kind of tackling the stigma and the kind of taboo around mental health in men, women, everyone of all ages? Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's huge, it's so important. I think that's, I think that's what's been holding society back for so long now is just being able to just talk about stuff like say particularly men because it's such a taboo like men don't do that men are tough men just get on with it and no it's not that easy you know you can't do that anymore you're it's it's so important to just talk to somebody like i say a peer somebody that you trust or respect anybody like that just talk about it because for me like you know a problems like shared is a problem halved and if you're in a group for example do you know what i mean if you're in a group with 10 people and you're chatting about and they'll go yeah that i've done that as well and you're like oh wow you done oh wow it's not just me then do you know what i mean so that's the sort of thing that it does it makes it in your head especially so much more sort of like normal basically do you know what I mean it does it happens to everybody there's no even me you know i've been through times where in football i'm thinking i don't know if i can do this anymore but you you know you talk to people you get through it and then you think 
yeah, that was that was a bit silly, but you know, we, we got through it. It's the way it is. You've got to talk about it. Simple as that. Did you have a kind of big challenge that you overcame maybe in the racing club Warwick days or kind of when you were first coming through maybe at Stoke, did you have a big setback and a challenge that you had to overcome? Um, I would say as a goalkeeper you you have a lot of setbacks, you know, there's there's always, you know, you could play ten games in a row where you are incredible, but you make a mistake on telly in front of, like you say, half a billion people or whatever, within seconds on the internet you are getting pelters. You are the worst goalie in the world, you know, and that is the sort of thing that footballers have to deal with nowadays. So I think it's important to take everything that you see on the internet with a pinch of salt um, and not read too much into it because these people, they're not your friends on the internet. You will never meet these people. So don't let their opinion influence you or affect you or anger you or anything like that. I think if you were to look at it, you look at certain maybe like footballers accounts and you see the kind of glory end of it, you see the boot deals, you see them on the training ground, you see them playing the Premier League games, but you don't always see the kind of hard work, the commitment, the effort, the ups and the downs yeah, that have sure, kind of yeah. got, you know, have got someone to... That that kind of seems, that's career. like the internet all over, that's Instagram <laughs> though, isn't it? You only see the best bits, that's the whole point of Instagram, for example, that you only, it's only there to show you the best bits, the shiny bits, the polished, edited bits kind of thing, and the bits before it, the guts, the sweat, the grit, the determination, the hard work, the tears, all that kind of stuff, you do not see any of that stuff, and that for me is what I think needs to change, because there's no way anybody, that you look at some people and you just think, there's no way you live your life like that, <laughs> that's impossible, that's ridiculous, so no, it's, it does, it has a lot to answer for. Uh, brilliant Ben, thank you so much for your time, and uh, no, it's absolutely brilliant, and uh, no, I think we, you know, we work, I work with a lot of children, and they look up to footballers so much, yeah, so if yeah. you're saying all the right things and doing the right things and eating your porridge in the morning, then that, you know... No, keep it going, mate. Honestly, it's important. Get the message out there and get as many people like you guys as well. If you see somebody that you think could do with coming along to a session, get them along to the session because it's brilliant. It helps. It really does help. Do you know what I mean? You, you guys will testify for it. I'll testify. You know. It's the way it is. Talking about stuff just helps stuff, so, so get involved. Football's the winner. Exactly. <laughs> Cheers, Lovely. Thank Cheers, mate. Cheers, Paul. Nice you. to meet you, Thanks. mate. Mohamed, legend. Cheers, guys. I know this video was good, so if you like this, you'll like this one even more. Can you just hold it yeah. For, for, for cool. I know this video was good, and if you like this one, you'll like this one even more. No, I need to point when I say this one even more. Yeah. I know this video was good, so if you like this, you'll definitely like this one. Lovely. Yeah. Done. Nice, lads. Nice.